Hello there, everybody. Welcome to this week's edition of The Verdict. So we've got lots of interesting races to have a look at in the show, and we're going to take you uh, to Epsom, we're going to go uh, to Leicester, we're going to go to Kempton, and we'll go to Sandown and Navan as well. Lots to get through. Uh, one scintillating time performance and a young stayer to keep a very close eye on as we head towards Ascot and the Ascot Gold Cup. Let's start at Kempton Park earlier in the week on Monday. It was a very good card overall. And I'm going to highlight the, the condition stakes over a mile, for which Saga in Her Majesty the Queen's Colours was the 8 to 13 favourite, head of Maljum at 3 to 1, R12 15 to 2, and Bayrak was a 12 to 1 shot. And I think we are starting off here on the verdict with the best race of the week. It certainly was the best time performance of the week, and it was put up by Maljum who was sensationally good in this, particularly in the closing stages of the race. And I think he's possibly a group one horse in waiting. Let's see what he achieved out there on the track at Kenton on Monday afternoon. He's slowly away, horse number three, Maljun, for William Haggis and Tom Marquand. And they go quite a steady gallop early on. It's Saga who takes them along with Artois and the hard pulling Bayrak in third with Marquand just making up that ground now to get a nice toe through this race. Now this was quite steadily run. The finishing speed percentage, 106.21, meaning that Maljum has quickened up in good style to finish off the last three furlongs quicker than he ran the rest of the race. But that doesn't tell the full tale because he quickened up so well that he was able to show a sharp turn of foot in furlong seven, 11.14 seconds. He was really motoring through the last couple of furlongs and this sharp turn of foot well, it's going to see him racing, I think, in group company hereafter. He's still quite green. It's only his second career start, and he took a while to pick up under Tom Mockhand, but when the boosters kicked in, he was really, really impressive. The time figure that he produced was really good indeed, and the first two pulled a long way clear of Artois, who finished third. Frankie goes on Saga now, and just catches Tom Mockhand out a little bit, Maljun not really going forward for him yet, but then he switches and Marquand gets into him. Remember, he's still green, it's only his second start, and now he's away. The turbo's kicked in and he flies home. He puts Saga away with no problem at all. Artois, who was well backed, miles back in third place. Bayrak absolutely thrashed back in fourth, and Marquand can just ease this fella down in the closing stages. That was a sharp turn of foot from Maljun. His last three furlongs, 34.15. Boy, did he motor through those final three furlongs. He was really, really impressive. And I know this is just a condition stakes at Kempton Park and there are only four runners. But this is, for me, just about the best performance of the week on the clock. But we're asking not what he beat or what other horses beat during the week, but how fast did he run to achieve what he did? And the answer is that he ran very fast indeed. And William Haggis, has got a really nice colt on his hands. And probably find out in the future that the second's pretty good as well, Saga. But I like Maljum. I think he's a group one horse in waiting. And that turn of foot will be better employed if he gets a better run race as well. They really did steady it up from halfway here. Frankie trying to stack them up. It didn't help Maljum, but he still come home strongly, not having the run of the race, things not going his way, but still mightily impressive under Tom Marquand, who was quite effusive in his praise afterwards for this uh, really impressive looking cult. He's certainly one to follow. Well, having just had a look at the best time performance of the week put up by Maljun, uh, let's have a look and see if we've got a, a derby contender that ran last week. And we'll go to the Kazoo Blue Ribbon to trial at Epsom on Tuesday. It was over a mile and a quarter and a half. He was favourite coming back in trip, having won over a mile and a half at Leicester. He was 9-4, to 7-2, mighty Ulysses. United Nations, Fraden O'Brien, well back, 4-1 from 11-2, to two, and Zane Sarinda was a 7-1 to one shot. Well, have we seen a genuine derby contender in this race? I'm not sure that we have, but we've got another Godolphin winner in the shape of Nahani. And what happened in this race was that he was able to dictate a very steady gallop and he got his own way out in front under William Buick and essentially this was a very good ride from Buick. Nahani came from two, he beat Grand Alliance from six, Zane Sarinda from four, United Nations inconvenienced by the run of the race back in fourth place from eight and Mighty Ulysses from stall seven. Mighty Ulysses I'll highlight now, look at him on the outside, yellow cap, 
and the blue body pulling really hard. He was fierce under Frankie, he struggled to get him to settle in behind. He was on the wide outside and it was hard for Frankie to get any cover. He will drop it in a minute, mighty Ulysses, but he didn't do himself any favours by pulling too hard. And there's Nahani out in front, loping along, very steady fractions according to the course track sectionals. This race was a crawl and sprint race. They didn't pick it up till three furlongs out. Finishing speed percentage, 114.38. They came home 14.38% quicker in the last three furlongs than they ran the rest of the race. It really was a dawdle out there. You'd think that wouldn't have suited Nahani necessarily because he won a mile and a half at Leicester last time. He's got plenty of stamina in his pedigree. He's clearly quite a good stayer, but he's not a slow stayer either. He was able to pick up pretty well through those final three furlongs when the race started in earnest and he fired an 11.01 second furlong, 11.1 and 11.73. So he's not a slow horse by any stretch of the imagination. He's not just a galloper. He does have a good turn of foot, but he had a tactical advantage here over all of his rivals under a super ride from William Buick. Look at the horse on the outside. Here comes Frankie on mighty Ulysses. I think he's shaped very, very well. He's cruising up under the Tory. He's got a high cruising speed and he's got a turn of foot, but he pulled too hard in the early stages of this race. And you'll see now he empties under the Tory, just about gets him to the front, but now he stops and the Tory's not hard on him thereafter. He's a, a must for possibly a mile race going forward. He could be a group horse in the making free travel so well. Grand Alliance rallying on the rail, Zane Sarinda finishing well and also finishing well. United Nations. Now he was held up last by Ryan Moore and he was most inconvenienced in this race of any of them. Ryan had to switch to the wide outside to get a run out of him and if you watch Ryan's body language on that wide outside he's not too hard on United Nations at all. A couple of flicks with the whip and he comes home really strongly. I think he's miles better than the bare result because of the run of the race. I think mighty Ulysses is better than the, the bare result because he pulled too hard and Nahani well He'll probably have a crack at the derby now. Mile and a half is no problem for him whatsoever. He's now got experience on the track and with the dint of winning this, he gets into the derby anyway, so they might as well have a, a crack at it. And I think he's a, a good stare in the making, Nahani, but he's not slow and he might have slightly better derby credentials than, than some people uh, think. But here, this is all down to William Buick. What a ride from the front. The Dolphin going incredibly well, particularly Charlie Appleby and Nahani displayed a, a tremendous attitude in the closing stages to see off his rivals. But it's going to be an interesting race this to follow going forward, particularly with the, the two eye catchers for your racing TV track and Mighty Ulysses and United Nations. It's the Kazoo Derby next for the winner though, Nahani. So we've just seen Nahani uh, win the Blue Ribbon Trial at Epsom in what was a, a steadily run race. And that's a, something of a theme as we go into the Bet365 mile that took place at uh, Sandown uh, last Friday. For this was a steadily run affair as well. The market was very interesting for alcohol free. You'd have thought would have gone off the odds on for this. Well, she was very weak in the market and went off at seven to four in the end. Muta Sarbeck, 85 to 40 and Sunray Major uh, a drifter at 9 to 2. Lights on, 17 to 2 from 12s. Uh, quite well backed, and that money was telling. And Shrewd for Lights on obliges here, jumping from stall one, wins for Sir Michael Stout and uh, Ryan Moore, and uh, beats Muta Sarbeck. And in third place, and wide outside, alcohol free, coming from stall number six. This is how it panned out, and it was very steadily run. The finishing speed percentage was 110.03 and it was Ross Collin who took them along uh, at this very steady gallop but it enabled him to run a big race Ross Collin. He wasn't beaten uh, all that far and it was a bold decision by the, the horse watchers to chuck him in here uh, and he didn't let them down. He ran uh, very well indeed under a shrewd ride from Jason Watson out in front. Now lights on is down towards the inside with the, the blue cap under uh, Ryan Moore. Not too far off the gallop at this stage. Alcohol free towards the wide outside, out the back in the hood, a little bit keen. She's doing a bit too much. And uh, one wonders what Andrew Bullen is going to do with her now, for she was disappointing in her couple of runs prior to this, and she's disappointed here as well, albeit 
perhaps the pace of the race uh, didn't suit her. And the unlucky horse is last in the Shadwell colours under Jim Crowley. That is Muta Sarbeck. And I think it's fair to argue that he should have won this race, but he doesn't get a clear run when he needs it. He cannot get out when he wants to and lights on. She gets out, she gets a gap, and she gets first run on Muta Sarbeck to some extent. She quickened up pretty well, lights on, if you look at the course track sectionals, the six furlong 11.92, the seven furlong 11.93, and that sealed the deal for her. You can see here, she's just going to get a gap between Ross Collin and Johan, the Lincoln winner. She gets a lovely split. Meanwhile, Muta Sarbeck, Shadwell Colours, is struggling to get a run. Jim Crowley went for a gap, it closed, he had to switch a little bit, he lost momentum, and now once he gets him out, he flies home, he comes home really strongly. Look at the final three furlongs, 36-29 for the winner, but 36-1-4 for Muta Sarbeck. He's come home stronger than the winner, but he just didn't get the run of the race, and he was very unlucky. Alcohol Free boxed on and finished back in, in third place in the end, but she was essentially a little bit disappointing. She's got some very good form, and she ought to be very competitive in this grade. Sunray Major towards the uh, outside in the colour of colour as well. He hasn't run too badly. He um, travelled quite strongly uh, through the race, but he, he couldn't pick up. And this did turn into a, a bit of a sprint. Look at Muta Sarbeck, stuck in behind. Nowhere to go. He's in behind Sunray Major. He's trying to get between him and Johan. Can't get there. Switches Jim Crowley to look to the outside. There's nothing doing there either. Alcohol free keeping him in. He's just still having to sit and wait. And now he can go as Sunray Major drifts to his right. But it's all too late for Ryan Moore has got through. Given Ross Collin a bump, lights on. She's got first go. And she takes advantage of that. One wonders uh, where she'll be going now. I think Royal Ascot's probably the, the place for her. The Duke of Cambridge is probably where they'll go with her. Perhaps stick to taking on her own sex. And uh, she's clearly a, a very good filly. She's versatile as well in terms of ground. Uh, she has one on a soft ground. She did so last season at Pontefract. And here on better ground, uh, she was just as effective. But it was a messy bet, 365 mile. She got the best run. She's talented, but things went her way. They didn't go Muta Sarbeck's way at all. And he can consider himself, and the Charlie Hills team will consider themselves very unlucky indeed. But it's a bet, 365 mile for Sir Michael Statt and Ryan Moore. There were eight races at Navan on Saturday, and Aidan O'Brien won five of them. And we're going to have a look at one of his winners here in the Salsable Stakes. It was run over a mile and a quarter. Listed event for Phillies. And his winner here was Concert Hall, who was sent off the two to one favourite. Tranquil Lady was five to two. Caird Godeo was a three to one shot and well backed. Magical Lagoon tens and it was ten to one. And bigger uh, the rest. But uh, well, it was a big, big day for the Aidan O'Brien team. And Concert Hall got the job done for him here, albeit narrowly. She had to work very hard to land this and beat Magical Lagoon into second place. From five, she came from Magical Lagoon, jumped out of stall at number four. She had some good form as a two-year-old uh, concert hall. She didn't quite crack it at grade one level, but she proved to be um, capable at grade two and grade three level. Down into a listed race here, and she has one, albeit very narrowly from Magical Lagoon, but I think she's a bit better than the bare results. She sat in third place there at this stage, she's just a little bit keen, doing a bit uh, too much. Ryan eventually will get her settled, but the reason I think she's better than the bare result is she had to just wait to get a bit of a run. She was in behind horses, rather like uh, Muta Sarbeck, and she just had to wait a stride or two. I think she'd have won maybe three quarters of a length or a length if she'd got out when she wanted to. Um, so I think you can, you can upgrade her performance. Her final time of 2 minutes 7.24 uh, was OK. I don't think they went a, a, a mad gallop. A few of them were keen in behind, including her. Um, the time is just ordinary for the grade. But nonetheless, I think she's a filly of potential going forward. She ran in the Phillies Mile uh, last year. She was quite well beaten in that. But remember, in that Phillies Mile, Magical was beaten, Snowfall was beaten, Mother Earth was beaten, Love was beaten, and they all went on to be grade one fillies. Um, so I'm not holding that uh, against her. And I like her stepping up in trip. I think the Kazoo Oaks is going to be the place for her. She's bred to stay. There's plenty of stamina on the dam side of the pedigree. And I think they'll, they'll have a crack at the Oaks. And she wouldn't be out of the way in that, I don't think. She's a 12 to one shot, generally. And that, that would be a reasonable price for me. Now, this is where Ryan's waiting. He's in behind the purple and white colours. He's looking for a gap. He couldn't quite go when he wanted to. 
Magical Lagoon Whitecap has hit the front now, and Ryan's got to go and fetch that filly. He's got to go and pick her up. And she does quicken quite well, Concert Hall, and she gets there, and I thought she was just going to go away and win a length or so here. But the, the runner-up's rallied quite well, and, and Ryan's not too hard on her. He's the last to go for his stick. He gives her about three cracks, and she just clings on by the narrowest of margins. I think up in trip is going to really suit this filly. There's lots of stamina there, and this will have put a spot on for, for a tilt at the Kazoo Oaks. The, um, the Irish Guineas uh, was mentioned by connections afterwards. That's Aidan O'Brien mentioned that, but I wouldn't be surprised if they do have a, do have a crack at the Oaks. I think that's the place for her, and I think she'd run really well if she went there. Um, and just see here, look at Ryan. He can't quite get out when he wants to, and then he goes for it, and she does pick up and shows a good attitude. She's got a, a head bowed in honesty, and she runs uh, all the way to the line. Uh, Magical Lagoon, he, her head's up a little bit, isn't it? Not quite, not quite the same demeanour as the winner. Uh, they get a little bit close in the closing stages, but no problems uh, whatsoever. So I think she's better than the result at the concert hall, and I think they'll probably go to the, the Oaks with her. She's a nice looking filly, isn't she? And, um, she might just surprise a few at Epsom in a few weeks' time. Well, if Maldrin put up the best time performance of the week, I think the winner of the vintage crop stakes is a horse that is chock full of potential and one to be very, very excited about. The favourite for this race was Search for a Song at 6-5. to five. She's a Grade 1 winner. The winner, though, was her full brother, Kiprios, who went off as a 5-1 to one shot. And back in third place was Baron Samdi. I think this is a very good horse indeed. I think he's a really promising young stayer. Let's see what he achieved out there. He came out of stall number six, searched for a song, jumped out of two and she was second. And Baron Samdi was uh, out of stall number five and he finished back in third place. Um, it's a very interesting performance this from Kiprios. First thing though, uh, full brother, full sister. And if you, you have a look at them, the red cap, white sleeves, black body on the inside with a big white face, white cap, white sleeves, black body on the outside. They look exactly the same, don't they, with their big white faces, their white socks behind as well. They do, do look identical and they are both blessed with a ton of ability. Her ability, everybody knows about. She's a, a grade one Irish St. Ledger winner. Uh, she's got really good grade one form uh, to her name. Kiprios, on the other hand, is relatively unexposed. He's a horse who was thought to perhaps be a, a derby horse, uh, things didn't pan out for him in the Lingfield, the Derby trial, and he came out under the stalls when he, he went to Ascot. Two real blips when he's been on his travels. But in Ireland, he's unbeaten in three starts, this fella. And I think he could become the new king of the stayers. I think he could become a cup horse and a really good one at that. Here, he chased a steadyish gallop set by Ephanoc Fizz. Ryan more anxious to be quite handy, quite close to the pace. Search for a song, perhaps just a little bit keen down on the inside in the, the red cap, perhaps doing a little bit too much, but she wasn't too far off the pace. And as it panned out, she had every chance of winning this. She loomed up going well, but she was completely outstayed and outpointed by this very promising Kiprios. So this looks like really solid form. Baron Sandy's back in third for the Joseph O'Brien team. He disappointed at Maidan last time up but he was well beaten uh, by these two. They've pulled quite a long way clear in the closing stages. With seven to run, Ryan Moore's just edging up towards the uh, Ephanoc Fizz. And if you watch this horse uh, closely in the home straight, watch his ears, he's flicking them backwards and forwards. He's not doing a tap under Ryan, but when Ryan sits into him and asks him to go, the response is really, really impressive to my eye. Uh, and I think he's gonna be tough to beat at this trip or perhaps over further in the future. He's got a host of entries. Some of them at a mile and a half, for example, the Coronation Stakes, but he's also in the Yorkshire Cup as well. He's in the Tattersalls Irish Gold Cup as well. I think he's got five entries going forward in total. He's clearly well thought of, Kiprios. This is where the race begins to hot up. Search for songs, got off the inside. She angles out and she's got her brother in her sights now, but he will not go down without a fight. Ryan now begins to get at him. Just get a bit lower in the saddle. He's got past Ephanoc Fizz, the outsider, in this race. Look at the ears there. He's just flicked his ears, Kiprios, and had a look, and again. Search for a song you think is going to breeze by him, but oh no. Once Ryan gets into him, watch his response here off the bridle. He 
picks up and he clears away from a grade one winning filly. He's giving her a pound in this race as well. Ryan will switch his whip there, give him another one. And look at the way he gallops all the way to the line. Baron Sandy's hanging back in third place. And the further they go, the better Kiprios is here, beating a grade one horse back in second place. And he's lightly raced and open to a ton of improval. I think there's, there's chunks and chunks more to come from this horse and he's a must for your racing TV tracker. You do not want to miss him wherever he turns up, in my opinion. Now this race was quite steadily run. The final time was not that impressive, but nonetheless, the way he went about beating his sister was impressive and to the, to the casual eye, I don't think you could fail to be impressed uh, with this guy. His um, effort off the bridle, very good. Indeed, they're about four or five lengths clear of Baron Sandy. And this vintage crop looks to be a really strong race, in my opinion. And I think he's one of the best horses we've seen this season. Well, there are a host of good races that I could have chosen uh, to analyse here on the verdict from last week. Uh, this is perhaps not one that uh, many would have chosen at uh, first glance, but I think it's worth having a, a good look at. The cause and obviously stakes that took place at Leicester on Saturday it was over a mile and a quarter. A newcomer headed the market. It's ruling dynasty for Charlie Appleby and Godolphin, eight to 13. Magisterial for the Gosden team, nine to four and weak in the market. Crystal Delight from a beautiful family that Sir Michael Stout knows uh, very well, the Crystal Ocean family, 16 to one. Sulcum 16s and 28s and bigger the rest. And the main reason I've chosen this race is that I think it's going to work out very well Indeed, Magisterial makes all of the running and wins from stall number three, from Ruling Dynasty in five, and Crystal Delight from stall number six. Now, we've dealt with a number of uh, steadily run races so far here on The Verdict this week, and we do have another one here. Uh, the finishing speed percentage, 110.73. So they're really rattling home, having gone a steady gallop in the early stages. And it was Dittori dictating things out in front on Magisterial. He got his own way. He was able to dictate and he was able to go and do his own thing throughout. Held up in behind, ruling dynasty in the Godolphin blue. And back in third place, Crystal Delight. Beautiful family and I think she's definitely a, a horse to follow. You really want to keep an eye on Crystal Delight uh, going forward. It's a family that Sir Michael Stout knows incredibly well. And I think Crystal Delight will make up into a very good horse. Likewise, ruling dynasty in the Godolphin blue because he was very well back for his debut. He's related to um, Old Persian. Lots of stamina in his pedigree and the way this race was run would not necessarily have suited him at all. But he runs well in to be second and I think he's a horse to keep an eye on going forward over a mile and a half, perhaps even further than a mile and a half in the future. He looks like a strong stare in the making. As they turn for home, Frankie is dictating matters. He's gone very steadily we got to the four pole and he's still not really done much out in front. It's been a bit of a crawl. The winner came home 11.56, 11.8 and then a 12.11. Uh, one, one. Um, they're not sensational fractions, not like Maldum that we saw at Kempton at the top of the show. But he's producing those fractions from a position of advantage in that he's one or two lengths clear. Look to the outside, here's Crystal Delight who travels up quite well, not given a hard time by any stretch of the imagination in the closing stages. Ruling Dynasty now, trying to close down Magisterial, but I think uh, an impossible job the way the race was run. When a horse dictates fractions like Magisterial did, with a finishing speed percentage of 110.73, i.e. he's finishing quickly, almost impossible to run down. Um, but the runner-up's done well to get as close as he did in the end. And the third is also a horse that we should follow. So I think the main reason for looking at this race is to highlight three really nice horses for the future. The first two are um, derby entries. I'm not sure they'll, they'll turn up there necessarily. Magisterial perhaps could go to the Dante. He does have an, an entry there. Um, you'd have to be a little bit wary of the fact that he got an easy lead out in front. But I think he's probably very smart and the second and third are pretty smart as well too. So this is a race very much worth following. Stick all three of them in the, the, the Racing TV uh, tracker and you won't go uh, far wrong. I venture to say that the second and third will win uh, next time up. The rest of them, well, they were, they were uh, pretty well 
uh, beaten off. But um, frankly, you can see here he's just winding Magisterial up, but that was only from uh, the three pole. That's what the, the sectionals tell us that they went, they crawled, and then Frankie picked it up from three to two and then uh, two to one. And uh, he was going to be impossible to run down thereafter. They've all got lovely pedigrees, lots of depth in their pedigrees. Magisterial. It looks like on pedigree he probably will stay a, a mile and a half. The runner up, uh, he'll stay a bit further than that. And the third, well, travelled very strongly, maybe a bit too strongly off a steady gallop, would probably be a, perhaps a quicker horse in the future than the other two. But a really nice novice stakes at Leicester, uh, and one definitely uh, to keep an eye on. So that's the verdict uh, this week. We saw uh, lots of interesting racing uh, throughout uh, the week. Uh, Mal June, the best time performance, and, and definitely horse to keep an eye on from the Willie Haggis yard. Uh, I'd also mentioned Nahani and the ride that he got from William Buick, a very similar ride to Magisterial that Frankie gave that horse at Leicester. They were two good uh, front-running rides. And we saw a very good horse in Ireland, in my opinion, Kiprios, one of the stars of the week. He and Maljoom, well, they are really mouth-watering prospects going forward. Thanks for watching this week. Next week, the first of the classics.